Welcome to the Toolhound Learning Center, a set of resources to help you get started using Toolhound 5. Importing data. In this video, we'll look at why you'd want to import data, the types of data that can be imported, the import templates, how to complete the templates, and how to import. Importing data is used usually at the beginning of a Toolhound implementation project to efficiently bulk load inventory and personnel from pre-configured templates. Using this method, you will be actively tracking your tools and equipment with Toolhound quickly. This process is done in two steps. The first step is to complete the spreadsheet according to the required formatting. In this step, you gather and standardize the data you wish to import into Toolhound. In the Core Principles video, we saw that if your organization already has standardized part numbers and descriptions, you should continue to use these corporate standards. The second step is to import the templates into Toolhound using the Import Data feature. The core data types are most commonly imported. Employers, personnel, part numbers, and serialized items. We will look at each of these four during this video. The import templates are Excel spreadsheets with a preset format for each data type. Regardless of the type of data being imported, each template contains two tabs. The first tab is a worksheet to be filled in with your data. This tab must remain exactly as shown. Do not change the formatting, column order, or column names. Changing the structure of the spreadsheet will cause the import to fail. The second contains instructions on how to complete each column in the worksheet. From within Toolhound, click Utilities, Import Data. Then for each one of the templates you want to fill in, click Download and save the file. For each spreadsheet template, it is important to review the Instructions tab for explanations on how to enter the data for each column. The column names on the first worksheet must remain exactly as they appear. Any columns shown in bold are required fields and must be completed, otherwise the data will not be imported. The description gives an expanded description of the column. The contents column defines the format of the information to be entered, including the maximum number of characters allowed for the field. For character columns, anything that is too long for the field will be truncated. For fields that reference other lists, such as crafts, vendors, manufacturers, etc., the column must contain the ID for that reference. The Notes column describes any special validation or other information for the column. As you learned in the Core Principles video, employers and personnel, both supervisors and subordinates, make up the framework in Toolhound. Employers must be imported before personnel and supervisors must be imported before their subordinates. Let's look at the templates. The required columns for this spreadsheet are the employer ID, the organization name, and the visibility which is the ID of the highest point in the location hierarchy. The personnel template contains the people, crafts and trades who will be using the inventory from your stocking location or tool crib. The required columns in this spreadsheet are personnel ID, last name, first name, employer ID, visibility ID, and the craft. For records that specify a supervisor ID, you must include a row for the supervisor with the Is Supervisor column set to Y. If you are importing supervisors and their subordinates, you will need to make two passes. The first pass imports the supervisor, and the second will import the subordinates so that their supervisors can be assigned. Crafts must manually be entered in Toolhound before importing personnel. As you learned in the Core Principles video, part numbers identify a group of items with common characteristics. Frequently, the model number or vendor part number is used. Part numbers contain all the general information for the part. Let's look at the required columns for this spreadsheet. Part note or the part number, the description, the inventory type, which must contain serialized, consumable, bulk, or non-stock, spelled out in full, and the visibility, is the ID of the highest point in the location hierarchy. For non-serialized inventory, include the primary ID. Remember that for non-serialized inventory, there's only one primary ID for each part number. Also for non-serialized inventory, the quantity will need to be added with an inventory adjustment after importing. 
Other columns frequently used to enable more flexible reporting are category and subcategory, manufacturer, and vendor. Categories and subcategories will be imported along with the part numbers, but other references, vendors, manufacturers, units of measure, must be entered manually into Toolhound before importing. This is the detailed information for each unique inventory item. Let's look at the required columns. Part No is the part number and must already appear in the part number spreadsheet. Stocking point is the ID of the stocking point location, also known as the tool crib. Primary ID is the primary asset ID for the tool, usually a barcode. Status must be in stock, written out in full. Optional references including the vendor, manufacturer, condition and department must be added manually in Toolhound before importing the spreadsheet. Once the template has been populated with data and is ready to import, save a copy of the file as the CSV, comma delimited file type. This is the file that will be used to import the data. Before attempting to import any data, make sure that you have entered all the required supporting references in Toolhound. The most important is the location hierarchy for the stocking point ID and visibility ID. Other references include crafts, vendors, manufacturers, units of measure, conditions, and departments if used. This is also a good time to make a backup of your database. The templates must be imported in the order shown, otherwise the import will fail since one piece of data builds on another. You do not need to import every data type. To import a template, Click on Upload for the data type you're importing. Navigate to the CSV version of the template, select it, and click Open. Click Preview. If you have lots of rows in your template, it might take several seconds before the preview is shown. Any errors will be displayed in the column at the left. Any row with an error won't be imported, so correct these errors either in Toolhound or your template before starting the import again. If there are no errors, click Import at the top left of the window, then click Yes on the confirmation message. When the import is complete, the import data page will be displayed. OK, so let's review. Templates are Excel spreadsheets that are downloaded from within Toolhound. The instructions for each spreadsheet are critical to correctly importing your data. Make sure to manually add any required references in Toolhound before importing. Save the spreadsheet in CSV, comma delimited format. Back up your database before importing your data templates, and finally import the data. Thanks for watching this video from the Toolhound Learning Center.